and of myself. Now, Roshan Mohammed Sali was in Ireland, where Syria's Grand Mufti was advocating for the easing of EU sanctions against Syria and for support in the fight against terrorism. Here's Roshan Mohammed Sali with more on that. Syria's Grand Mufti is on his first trip to Europe since the conflict in his country broke out. Accompanied by other prominent Syrian religious leaders, he's meeting with Irish religious leaders and politicians. I had hoped that we would have received this kind of invitation from many European countries so that they could have heard the voice of truth about what is really happening in Syria. Instead, they just take information from certain media which seeks to blacken the image of Syria. But we call on the European lawmakers from France, Britain and Ireland to visit Syria to see the truth for themselves. But when they don't come, we go to them. Sheikh Ahmed Hassoun was hosted by Irish Christian leaders at the prestigious Trinity College University in Dublin. He also addressed lawmakers at the Irish Parliament, calling for European Union sanctions on Syria to be lifted. The Syrian religious leaders told the Irish Parliament that European Union sanctions against Syria must be lifted because they're causing direct suffering in the country, especially in hospitals which are starved of medical equipment. They also invited parliamentarians to visit Syria for themselves and not simply to believe the Western media narrative about the country. We were asking the Irish people through the parliament to help us sit together as Syrians and uh, let us decide the future of our country and achieve peace. Everybody is tired of war. We all want peace and uh, all Syrians, uh, regardless of their background or their uh, affiliations, should come together and decide. But uh, uh, foreign intervention, including the uh, support and the funding of, uh, of these people who are killing us, should stop. For the past five years, European countries have stood against the Syrian government and supported those who are trying to topple it. But these Syrian religious personalities hope that Europe's attitude, which has contributed to the destabilization of the country, will finally change. Roshan Mohammed Sali, Press TV, Dublin. Excellent from Roshan Mohammed Sali in Dublin. I was myself in Dublin yesterday and was with the Grand Mufti and the other religious leaders uh, on their historic visit to Ireland. As the package made clear, the sanctions on Syria are killing Syrians. In fact, they have killed more Syrians than ISIS and Al-Qaeda have, and particularly the sanctions on hospital equipment. Imagine all the media hyperbole about the destruction of hospitals in the war by the Syrian Arab army and their allies, most of which is pure, unmitigated propaganda, whilst the same people who are crying their crocodile tears about hospitals in Aleppo are sanctioning Syrian hospitals starving them of medical equipment and crucial medicines and causing the deaths of large numbers of Syrian civilian people. Let me talk now, if I can, to His Excellency Bishop Ignatius Afram II of Antioch, who is in Dublin with the delegation. Your Excellency, welcome to comment. Thank you. Good evening. How wonderful to talk to you so soon after meeting you yesterday. Tell us how the visit has been going. How have you been received in Dublin? Uh, first of all, thank you for having me. Um, being in Dublin together with uh, his uh, grace, the Mufti, the Grand Mufti of Syria, in itself is a message and is a success of our mission, I believe, because uh, Mufti was denied visa to many European countries, and this is the first time for, since five years that he has gotten a visa. And being together as religious leaders, Christian and Muslims from Syria, uh, is, a, uh, is, is a message to the world that, uh, that in Syria there is no Muslim-Christian fighting, there is no Muslim-Christian disagreement. We all are Syrians, we all 
are victims of this war which is being waged on us in Syria. So uh, having a meeting at the uh, university uh, at the uh, university yesterday at Trinity College in uh, Dublin, and this morning with the, with the uh, intercommittee uh, for foreign relations, trade, and defense at the Irish Parliament, I believe, was a, a great opportunity for us to make our uh, voice heard. And we are grateful to the Irish people for listening to us. And uh, we have found so many sympathetic people who, who want peace because they know what the value of peace is. They went through a horrible experience of, uh, of a civil war previously, and they were able to come together and to uh, have an agreement, a peaceful agreement, and now they live together in peace, and they regret this many years of war. And we, therefore, think that they, are, they will be able to help us also achieve peace and have all Syrians live together in peace. Now, Your Grace, we certainly stopped the traffic yesterday in Dublin as these magnificent religious leaders, all of them arm in arm, uh, walked through the streets towards Trinity College. It was quite a sight, quite an experience. And it will have come as a surprise to the good Christian people of Ireland, one of the world's most Christian places, that the Western governments have been supporting terrorists, one of whose main preoccupations is killing Christians in Syria and destroying their holy places. This is one of the great contradictions of our time, isn't it? Absolutely, absolutely. We have been victimized as, as, as much as Muslims, but we are doubly targeted because of our Christian faith also. And uh, it's enough to say that we have two of our eminent archbishops, the bishops of Aleppo, Gregorius, Johanna Ibrahim, and Paulus Yazji, who were kidnapped on April 22, 2013, and we still do not have a word about them. And there are so many churches which were uh, destroyed, uh, monasteries, and many people killed at, uh, in a, uh, together with, with, uh, with uh, many Muslim uh, religious people. They were all killed because of their faith. And the problem here in, in the West is uh, uh, mostly uh, uh, the uh, media problem, because they are not reporting what's happening there. They're reporting what they like people to hear, but they're not reporting the truth. We talked about uh, attacking hospitals and schools. No one has reported that a school in Western Aleppo was attacked uh, 10 days ago and seven kids were killed together with three adults. No one, no one has reported that the uh, University of Aleppo was uh, targeted. No one reported that so many uh, victims are falling in the, in the Western part of Aleppo. They're talking all, only about the Eastern. Of course, uh, uh, any human being uh, should not be targeted, uh, especially civilians. But we have to be fair in reporting what's happening. Therefore, even among the politicians, there are some who do not really know uh, the facts on the ground. There, they only rely on on uh, on um, uh, media reports, and these media reports are mostly imbalanced and one-sided. And they're sharply contradicted by the media coverage of the war against the very same terrorists in Mosul. That war is presented as a noble war of liberation, whilst the war to liberate the people of Aleppo from ISIS and Al-Qaeda is treated as if it were a war crime. That's, that, that's, that's very correct, and uh, they are also failing to mention that these hundreds of thousands of civilians in eastern Aleppo are trying to flee that area to come to uh, areas under government control, but they are not allowed by the rebels, by the the terrorists, they are not allowing them to leave the area, therefore they are using them human shield, as human shields. And uh, not only that, but we uh, uh, see this double standard everywhere in this war. And uh, uh, it, it's, it's shame on the international